tougher penalties for gang associates? First tonight on our news live at 7, parliamentarians debate as Prime Minister Davis leads the charge, declaring enough is enough. Plus, mismanagement uncovered. An audit into the 2023 Carifta Games reveals registration problems, contract breaches, and an $800,000 deficit. And an alarming spike in child abuse cases. The Crisis Center reacting tonight to an 87% increase in reports. We'll tell you the disturbing trends of neglect, incest, and more. Then in our news at 7.30, the Deputy Prime Minister slams unfair travel advisories at UN Sustainability Week. How he says they're impacting tourism and sustainability funding. Our news live at 7 starts right now. Welcome to our news live at 7. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Candino Nolds. The recently unveiled audit into the 2023 Carifta Games shows serious breaches in registration, contracts, and financial oversight. The documents show an alarming deficit totaling nearly $1 million. CEO Lyndon Maycock responds in less than five minutes, claiming profitability despite audit findings. Before we get to his comments, parliamentarians debating the anti-gang bill, which levies stiffer penalties and lengthy prison sentences for gang associates. Prime Minister Philip Davis led debate on the bill, saying enough is enough. Bertany McDermott has the details. As he opened debate on the anti-gang bill tabled a few weeks ago, Prime Minister Philip Davis says gangs succeed when families and communities fail. Davis says one life lost to gang violence is a catastrophic failure. No one should underestimate the power of gang recruiters who show interest in the same young men who are overlooked by everyone else. And that's on us. The Prime Minister says it will take all hands on deck from stakeholders. He also hit out at successive governments that failed to create effective policies, parents, neighbors and community leaders. If you are to make real and enduring progress against gangs and crime, you'll need parents to create loving, safe homes. And we will need role models to offer the power of their example. The bill levies a $100,000 fine and a 25-year prison term to anyone convicted of gang-related offenses. The bill also issues fines and prison sentences for recruiting someone to join a gang, committing an offense for the financial benefit of a gang, instructing a gang member to commit a serious offense, threatening someone with retaliation in response to violence against a gang member or leader, and for endangering someone or causing damage to property on behalf of gangs, among other things. The bill also levies a 20-year sentence to anyone found guilty of harboring gang leaders or members. Housing Minister Keith Bell seconded the bill. The anti-gang bill, Madam Speaker, is meticulously crafted to dismantle the structures that enable such crimes. It targets not just the foot soldiers, but the leaders who direct these heinous acts from the shadows. By disrupting these networks, we aim to restore peace and order in our society. The official opposition threw their support behind the bill, calling it a crucial piece of legislation. Reporting for Our News, I'm Bertha McDermott. Thanks, Bertany. The country's murder count climbed to 43 overnight after a 36-year-old man was shot to death in the Ridgeland Park community. Police say the victim was walking on Antal Avenue when occupants of a dark-colored Japanese car pulled up. A gunman jumped out and began shooting. Despite being shot several times, police say the victim ran from the scene and collapsed just feet away from a nearby store. He was taken to hospital by EMS but died a short time later. This is the third homicide for the week and sixth for the month. Well, Bahamas Crisis Center officials reacting to alarming child abuse statistics released in a local daily. According to the paper, reports skyrocketed by 87% in 2023 compared to 2022. This includes a major spike in cases of physical, sexual, and verbal abuse, emotional neglect and abandonment, and even incest. A total of 409 reported cases. Crisis Center Executive Director is Dr. Sandra Dean Patterson. Whether it's physical, psychological, sexual, we have to be concerned because, you know, children learn what they live 
And if they live with violence and they live with, with abuse, they are, like, they are at risk of repeating that in their later life or they're at risk of it happening again. So not only does it have implications for the children who are living with it and experiencing it, but it has implications for us as a country. And Dr. Patterson says one of the keys to solving the issue, proper funding for relevant agencies, as well as providing proper counseling. And you're not properly resourcing the services to help them process the abuse so that they do not repeat it in later life. We have a problem as a country. So we have to address it, we have to respond to it, and we have to properly resource social services. You can't just resource the police, resource the prison. You've got to resource social services so that we can protect our children and make them um, good citizens. All right, be sure and stay tuned to our news at 7.30. For more on this, our Joshua William has, Williams has a full report coming up. And now to that audit of the local organizing committee and its handling of the 2023 Carifta Games. Among the startling revelations, registration issues, contract breaches, and a more than $800,000 deficit. Sasha Lightborn is following this. The 23-page Carifta 50 audit was tabled in the House of Assembly this morning. It details key findings from the 2023 Carifta Games that were held here in the Bahamas. It covered the period from September 1, 2022 to April 30, 2023, and was conducted by Auditor General Terence Bastian. The audit found documents presented did not indicate the 2023 Carifta Games company was registered correctly. The local organizing committee did not always keep invoices and the event's organization agreement was not signed. As it relates to contracts, according to the audit, there was a breach in contract agreements and stipulations related to employees, vendors and sponsorship agreements. And that's not all. The audit said senior director and other employee contracts were not certified. Now, as it relates to money, the audit also found temporary personnel were assigned tasks unrelated to the games, resulting in a 38% increase in weekly salaries and purchasing, procurement and allocation of funds policies were not adhered to. When it came to adherence to the Carifta Games budget, the audit says there was no evidence of agreed-upon budgetary adjustments. There was a deficit of more than $829,000 at the end. Now, I reached out to the 2023 Carifta Games Local Organizing Committee Chief Executive Officer Lyndon Maycock. Here's what he had to say about the audit's findings. The Carifta Games was very profitable. It's totally misrepresented, totally misrepresented. As an auditor, I wouldn't even term that in the same category as an audit. The games were held from April 7th through 10th at the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium, featuring over 600 athletes from 28 countries. Reporting for our news, I'm Sasha Lightborn. All right, we've got much more to get to tonight, but for now, it's time for your first look at temperatures. Meteorologist Ian McKenzie is standing by in the Weather Center. Ian? Thanks, Candino, and good evening, Bahamas. Welcome to your forecast on this lovely Wednesday evening. Currently outside our studios, we're under a few clouds with a temperature of 78. Our winds are from the east at 12 miles per hour. Comfortable feels like temperature of 79. Current temperatures across the country at this time in Alistair Bimini, we have 76, 77 in our nation's second city, as well as Great Harbor Key, 78 in Nicholstown and in the capital, 76 in Governors Harbor, 75 in Marsh Harbor. The central Bahamas, we have 77 in Camps Bay, as well as Arthurstown and Coburn Towns in Salvador, 78 in Georgetown and in Deadman's Key, Long Island. The Southeast Bahamas, you have 79 in Duncan Town, as well as Abraham's Bay, Meguana, 78 in Kernel Hill and Electoral Bay, 80 in Matthew Town, and in Providentialis, Turks and Caicos. First look now at our satellite and radar imagery, where we have few clouds across the area. High pressure remains dominant, large, and in charge. Stick around, more weather is still to come. Thanks, Ian. And still to come on our news, the Davis administration introduces a new bill to replace the Stem Cell Research Act. The health minister highlights focus on innovation and medical tourism. And tensions ease between the Bahamas Hotel Union and Labor Director. The union chief acknowledges persistent challenges but notes improved relations. The story when our news returns. 
So you said you're here for Sally's funeral? How do you know Sally? He was my rock and my anchor. Yeah, he was a good man. <laughs> he most certainly was not. Watch what you say about Sully. Who is this child? Your sisters. I'm asking you to do a few things for me. Once they are done, you will both receive your inheritance. The Paradise Hotel. When can I sell? Is this what the hotel is really worth? Don't take this the wrong way. It isn't really much of a hotel. The Davis administration bringing the longevity and regenerative therapy bill to repeal and replace the Stem Cells Research Act passed under the former Christie administration. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Michael Darville says the bill will establish a national board to foster innovation, promote local standards and best practices, and encourage the advancement of medical tourism. It would also develop incentives that will attract top-tier biomedical companies to operate in the Bahamas, thereby bringing new high-paying jobs and opportunities for our people. Strengthening our local economy and ensuring that stem cell therapies, gene therapies, and other promising regenerative therapies are accessible to our Bahamian, to the Bahamian people and is properly monitored by our professional teams. Dr. Darville says the new bill will potentially alleviate the burden of chronic diseases and reduce health care costs. The bill will also make way for an ethics review committee separate from the board to ensure cutting-edge therapy and research programs are properly vetted and safe. The bill also outlines processes for applications, approvals, registry, licenses, and monitoring. It also has provisions for patient rights. The bill includes provision for protecting patients' rights, interests, including informed consent requirements, transparency, treatment protocols, and mechanisms for reporting adverse effects. Months after protesting at the foot of the Sydney Poitier Bridge, President of the Bahamas Hotel Catering and Allied Workers Union, Darren Wood, says tensions have simmered. His comments came in response to Labor Director Howard Thompson, who last week told our news the relationship between both parties is copacetic. Woods admits there are challenges, but says for now they're happy. We're happy, um, but of course, like anything else, you have challenges. But the, 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 the difference in where we are today than where we were at yesterday, per se, is we didn't have an avenue where we could go and get our issues addressed because of the lack of an industrial agreement. But because we have industrial agreements in place now, we, we are satisfied that the avenues that are within those, embedded in, within those industrial agreements, gives us the avenue that we could go and address them with a third party and then someone else adjudicate whatever it is that we go into. Now that protest by Hotel Workers Union members back in late January was over failed efforts to get an 8% increase in salary. 
Speaking on the sideline of the Hotel Workers Leadership Training Awards ceremony this morning, the union chief said he was confident the line of communication with the new labor director is open. Whatever challenges that we've had in the past, um, everything seems to be on the low now. Of course, we would have just signed industrial agreements and out of industrial agreements, you'll have growing pains. And so once we get to the point that we actually have to address those um, growing pains, he has made himself available again, as he did in the past, to help and facilitate those processes so we don't have to resort to some other things to get some things done. When our news comes back from the break, we turn our spotlight to stories making headlines across the world as the Israeli Prime Minister asserts autonomy amid tensions with Iran. World power is still working to prevent escalation. Plus, Ford recalls over 450,000 Bronco Sport and Maverick cars. And the nine arrests made in a nearly $15 million gold heist at a Toronto airport when our news returns. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiencies. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having business in a box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer services that we pride ourselves on. Don't spend hours sending individual messages to your customers. Use SMS messaging instead. With Cable Bahamas Business Solutions SMS Messaging, you can send personalized messages to hundreds or even thousands of recipients instantly. It's quick, effortless, and cost-effective. Plus, it ensures that your messages are delivered directly to your customers' cellular phones, guaranteeing higher engagement. Save time and boost your outreach with SMS bulk messaging. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions at 601-8911 in Nassau or 602-8811 in the Family Islands. This is our news. Welcome back. We turn our attention now to stories making headlines across the world. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu thanked Germany and Britain for support during a visit on Wednesday, but stressed Israel's autonomy in security decisions. Amid tensions with Iran following strikes on Sunday, Netanyahu reaffirmed Israel's resolve to defend itself. World powers are striving to prevent a wider outbreak of conflict in the Middle East after Iran's attack on Saturday night, which involved hundreds of missiles and drones. The first time Iran has directly attacked Israel after decades of confrontation by proxies. British Foreign Secretary David Cameron warned of potential retaliation, highlighting escalating regional tensions. 
it's right to be in here in Israel today to show solidarity after that appalling attack by Iran. We made clear our views yesterday about what should happen next, but we also said Israel is an independent sovereign country and gets to make these choices. We hope continue to hope that as they do so, they do so in a way that is smart as well as tough, but is also does as little as possible to escalate this conflict. But I'm also here to focus back the um, eyes of the world onto the hostage situation. 192 days those people have been held. Hamas should release them now, and there is a good deal for them on the table. The only reason the conflict continues in Gaza is because they won't take that deal. Ford is recalling over 456,000 Broncos Ford and Maverick vehicles due to a battery detection issue posing crash risks. The automaker says modules may fail to detect battery changes, leading to power loss and other electric malfunctions. The recall spans model years 2021 to 2024 for Broncos Sports and 2022 to 2023 for Mavericks. While no injuries have been reported, there are warranty claims, field reports, and complaints. And nine arrests have been made in connection to last year's $14.77 million gold heist at Toronto Pearson International Airport. Only six gold bracelets worth $65,000 have been recovered so far. Police say they believe the stolen gold was melted down, sold, and profits used for illegal firearms trafficking. Over $312,000 in cash was seized along with smelting equipment as well as lists detailing distribution of profits found. Investigators say cooperation with U.S. authorities led to one arrest while a former Air Canada employee is still being sought. To become our news today in history, find out interesting facts about the day that was April 17th. Then in our news at 7.30, parliamentarians debate a proposed anti-gang bill featuring stiffer penalties and lengthy prison sentences. The Prime Minister leads the discussion, highlighting the importance of community support in combating gang influence. Plus, renowned artist John Beadle, known for innovation and natural talent, passes away at 60 after battle with cancer. Those who knew him reflect on his life and legacy when our news returns. So you said you're here for Sully's funeral? How do you know Sully? He was my rock and my anchor. Yeah, he was a good man. He most certainly was not. Watch what you say about Sully. Who is this child? Your sisters. I'm asking you to do a few things for me. Once they are done, you will both receive your inheritance. The Paradise Hotel. When can I sell? Is this what the hotel is really worth? Don't take this the wrong way. It isn't really much of a hotel. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fix and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having business in a box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer services that we pride ourselves on. Welcome back to our news. It's time now to turn our spotlight on events that shaped the day that was April 17th. Take a look. On the 
this day in Bahamian history, in 1965, Arthur Hanna, who would later become governor general from 2006 to 2010, was forcibly removed from the House of Assembly during a debate on boundary changes. When told to leave, he refused, and the sergeant-at-arms had to be called to take him from the House. He was suspended for his refusal to leave. The suspension was lifted four days later, and he was allowed to return. During the drug scandal era of the 1980s, Mr. Hanna resigned as deputy prime minister, but never left the PLP. As a nationalist, he refused British honors and advocated for a Bahamian honor system. He died on August 3, 2021. Then in 1970, the Bank of Montreal was incorporated in the Bahamas. This company would later become Bank of the Bahamas International. Pictured is the bank's head office, which was located downtown Nassau on Marlborough and Cumberland Street. The building is now known as the BAF Building and houses numerous tourism offices, among others. And finally, in 2013, Tavares Henderson Strawn reached the North Pole, making him the first Bahamian to successfully complete the trek. Strawn, in 2022, the Baintown boy was counted among the world's greatest when he was named one of 25 MacArthur's Fellows. Few honors carry the prestige of the MacArthur Foundation Fellowship. The coveted awards go to artists, activists, scholars, scientists, and others showing exceptional creativity. All right, if you want to watch that historical recap again, and for all of today's top stories, remember you can visit rnews.bs or you can share your favorites right from the R News Bahamas Facebook page. That's going to do it for us in News at 7. Joining us now is Megan Shepherd with the latest headlines. Hello, Megan, hello. Happy hump day. Nice to be here, back <laughs> with you again. Welcome back, well, again, later in the week. Thank you, thank you. This is the start of your week. Start of my week. <laughs> I know you're counting down to the weekend. Counting down to my birthday. All right, all right. Holy <laughs> how, how old is that going to make you? 20? You know, 20? Perfect number. <laughs> 20-ish. <with> <laughs> Let's go with that. Yes, it's so good to All see right. you. Happy pre-birthday. Thank you, thank you. Coming up tonight in 7 to 30, parliamentarians debate a proposed anti-gang bill. Plus, renowned artist John Beadle, known for innovation and natural talent, passes away at 60. Here are your latest headlines. Coming up tonight, debate begins. Stiffer penalties and lengthy prison sentences to come on stream as parliamentarians debate the anti-gang bill in the House of Assembly. Plus, changing his tune, the DPM now admits travel advisories are deterring tourists and could hinder sustainability efforts. And then, calls for the Davis administration to criminalize marital rape intensifies. Tonight, the crisis center is continuing to lead the charge. And later, null and void. The works minister denying requests to delay shantytown demolitions. We'll tell you why. Our news live at 7.30 returns right after this break. Are you or a loved one under medical care? Do you need affordable medical supplies? Ports International is the largest home health care supplier. Medical supplies at the very best price. And you can even shop online. From hospital beds to wound care, wheelchairs to walkers, Ports is a one-stop shop for your medical supplies and we accept insurance. We have online shopping and two locations to serve you at the Airport Industrial Park and Shirley Street. We also ship to the Family Islands. Shop online and visit us on Facebook. Call Ports at 377-1771. You've seen electric cars on the road, but isn't it time you drive one? Easy Car Sales invites you to experience the smooth, powerful ride and immerse yourself in the luxury and latest tech features. Find out why the Bahamas is going electric. Visit easy242.com and book your test drive now. 
What are you waiting for? Save money, drive smarter. There's an EV waiting for you at Easy Car Sales. At the gateway to the Americas, on the picturesque island of Grand Bahama, a pioneering initiative is taking shape. Lukaya Solar Power Limited presents the $15 million Lukaya Solar Power Project, the first of its kind in the Bahamas' energy landscape. The state-of-the-art solar farm on the Fairfield and Devon sites span just over 30 acres, and once completed, will harness the power of the sun to generate over 9.5 megawatts of clean, sustainable energy. The Lakaya Solar Project is a pivotal step towards diversifying the country's energy sources and significantly reducing dependency on fossil fuels. It's more than just a project. It's a commitment to a greener, more sustainable future. Lakaya Solar Power Limited, powered by Inti, Powering your world, powering your future. Bahamas Power and Light Company Limited looks forward to helping our customers eliminate wasted energy. Energy conservation is the decision and practice of using less energy. Energy efficiency means using less energy to perform the same task. Unplugging appliances not in use. That's energy conservation. Replacing an old refrigerator, washing machine with a new model. Adding in some Welcome to our news and thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Megan Shepard. Parliamentarians debating the anti-gang bill which levies stiffer penalties and lengthy prison sentences for gang associates. Prime Minister Philip Davis led debate on the bill. Davis says gangs succeed when families and communities fail. No one should underestimate the power of gang recruiters who show interest in the same young men who are overlooked by everyone else. And that's on us, isn't it? Every time we lose a young person to gang life, it represents failure that we should be honest enough to describe as catastrophic. Because once you're in, it's hard to get out. If you are to make real and enduring progress against gangs and crime, You'll need parents to create loving, safe homes. And we will need role models to offer the power of their example. The bill levies a $100,000 fine and a 25-year prison term to anyone convicted of gang-related offenses. The bill also issues fines and prison sentences for recruiting someone to join a gang, committing an offense for the financial benefit of a gang, instructing a gang member to commit a serious offense, and threatening someone with retaliation. The bill also levies a 20-year sentence to anyone found guilty of harboring gang leaders or members. Housing Minister Keith Bell seconded the bill. The anti-gang bill, Madam Speaker, is meticulously crafted to dismantle the structures that enable such crimes. It targets not just the foot soldiers, but the leaders who direct these heinous acts from the shadows. By disrupting these networks, we aim to restore peace and order in our society. Meantime, the country's murder count climbed to 43 overnight after a 36-year-old man was shot to death in the Ridgeland Park community. Police say the victim was walking on Anatole Avenue when occupants of a dark-colored Japanese car pulled up. A gunman jumped out and began shooting. Despite being shot several times, the victim ran from the scene and collapsed just feet away from a nearby store. He was taken to the hospital by EMS but died a short time later. This is the third homicide for the week and six for the month. A man accused of killing a 60-year-old woman as she headed to a prayer meeting in 2022 has been denied bail. Gerardo Marshall, who according to police is a shooter for a local gang, is accused of the shooting death of Claudette Capron. She was headed to a prayer meeting at Resurrection Power Kingdom Ministry on Robinson Road on January 18th when she was killed by bullets intended for someone else. Prosecutors say Marshall attempted to murder Anton Adderley and Emilio Ramsey during the same shooting. He's further accused of robbing Kendra Ramsey of a 2011 Honda Fit at gunpoint. Senior Justice Cheryl Grant Thompson denied bail on the grounds of public safety and that she believes he's a flight risk. Marshall's trial is set for August 6, 2024. 
And police say a 23-year-old woman tried to kill a man with her car. It happened around 10 last night on Carmichael Road. That's when investigators say she got into an argument with a 29-year-old man who was a passenger in her Jeep. The victim got out of the Jeep near Hall Close, but it didn't end there. Police say the woman hit the victim with her car before speeding off. The victim sustained serious injuries and was transported to the hospital in a private vehicle. His condition is listed as serious. The suspect later surrendered to police at Western Police Station. Marital rape continues to be one of the topics grabbing headlines in recent weeks. This after recent comments from the Prime Minister who insists rape is rape. Tonight, the Bahamas Crisis Center continues its call for the Davis administration to criminalize marital rape. Our Joshua Williams reports. How much more information and data do we need to act? Do we need to address? Do we need to protect? Do we need to intervene? That's Executive Director of the Bahamas Crisis Center, Dr. Sandra Dean Patterson, calling for the criminalization of marital rape. Her comments comes days after Prime Minister Philip Davis insisted rape shouldn't be categorized, saying that rape is rape. Dean Patterson had this response. Rape is rape. Whether you're a child or an adult, whether you're married or unmarried, whether you're young or old, you know, rape is rape. And so I commend him for that. But we need more. We need more than that. We need to act. We need to put things together. We need to work together. In 2022, the government drafted a bill that would criminalize marital rape. It was slated to be tabled in Parliament by the end of 2023. However, Parliament prorogued. The Protection Against Violence bill was later passed. But for the Crisis Center, it's not enough. The Bahamas Crisis Center and its partners renews the call for the government to amend the legal definition of rape by removing the five words, who is not his spouse. To ensure that the legal definition of rape truly establishes the standard that rape is rape. And for these advocates, progress doesn't stop at legislative changes. So we need to deal with this from an education point of view. We need to deal with this from a legal point of view. We need to deal with this from a conscientizing point of view. We need to deal with this from a religious point of view that it is a myth that because we get married, that we can hurt each other. Reporting for our news, I'm Joshua Williams. Thanks so much, Joshua. Well, beautiful spring weather on the outside of our studios today. Meteorologist Ian McKenzie joins us now with your first look at temperatures. Ian. Thanks, Megan. Good evening again, Bahamas. We are on the mostly clear skies outside our studios with a temperature of 78. Winds are from the east at 12 miles per hour. Comfortable feels like temperature of 71. First look now at our satellite and radar imagery. Beautiful conditions outside. High pressure remains the dominant weather feature. Not much to discuss there. Stick around, extended forecast is still to come. When our news comes back from the break, the heavy cost of crime. The tourism minister and deputy prime minister weighs in on the impact of recent travel advisories. Plus, time's up. The works minister says shantytown residents have had enough time to find alternative solutions to impending demolitions. And then, Bahamian artists and professionals weigh in on the life and legacy of a well-known mixed media artist following his recent passing. That's coming up when our news returns. So you said you're here for Sully's funeral? How do you know Sully? He was my rock and my anchor. Yeah, he was a good man. <laughs> he most certainly was not. Watch what you say about Sully. Who is this child? Your sisters. I'm asking you to do a few things for me. Once they are done, you will both receive your inheritance. The Paradise Hotel. When can I sell? Is this what the hotel is really worth? Don't take this the wrong way. It isn't really much of a hotel. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, 
It's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having Business in a Box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer service that we pride ourselves on. Don't spend hours sending individual messages to your customer. Unfair travel advisories deterring tourists and adverse listings could be impeding the country's ability to fund sustainability efforts. Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper shared these thoughts while speaking at the United Nations Sustainability Week Forum. Earlier this year, both the United States and Canada issued travel advisories relating to the Bahamas' uptick in crime and murders, something that saw hotels take a dip in bookings. Cooper says the advisories come at a heavy cost. As a destination, we live and breathe by our reputation. Therefore, it is critical to highlight that travel advisories issued by large nations about the Bahamas and other Caribbean destinations have the potential to do incredible harm to our economies and disrupt our sustainability efforts. We believe the release of these advisories without context is unfair and portrays a sensational narrative that we must expend scarce resources to correct. The Deputy Prime Minister going on to say that it's not only in the tourism sector that the Bahamas takes a hit. He says punishing one-size-fit-all rules make it hard to attract foreign direct investments. It is important to point out that the existing punishing one-size-fit-all rules and adverse listings from global economic organizations we are not a part of and we had no hand in creating make it all the more difficult to attract the foreign direct investments small island developing states critically need. We seek equity and fairness and we believe the UN is the appropriate body to set proper standards in this regard. Works and Family Island Affairs Minister Clay Sweeting says Shantytown residents' requests to extend the demolition date for illegal communities in North Eleuthera are null and void. Sweeting says with the commencement of demolition in November, he feels unregulated communities across the country have had ample time to make alternative arrangements. The 28 days notice, I think, ends on Monday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so we're still final, finalizing that, that information, but it seems as if every time we deal with a unregulated community, the same cry is that the time is not enough. From November, when we started dealing with these unregulated structures, the message was very clear on the mandate of the government, of the prime minister, and what we were, how we were dealing with the unregulated communities. He also points out that residents were warned months ago about the impending demolition of Eleuthera shantytowns. He adds the rules for unregulated communities in his hometown are the same for any other unregulated community in the country. In December, I announced that in March we would be dealing with Eleuthera, which is three months plus 28 days. So the timeline issue, I think, is null and void because we've been very serious from November, so that's five months ago, right? Um, but we do do our due diligence um, before we take action with social services and uh, Ministry of Health and all of that to ensure. 
multidisciplinary and mixed media artist John Beadle grew up in a home filled with art and he instantly took a liking to drawing. The renowned artist was known for his innovation, natural talent and love for art. Beadle passed away yesterday at the age of 60 after a battle with cancer. And now those who knew him best are reflecting on his life and legacy. Artist and former cartoonist Stan Burnside called it a privilege to be a part of his development. Later on in life, uh, as he developed as an artist, he started to use that science talent uh, and marry it with his fine arts talent so that some of his sculpture, uh, for example, uh, move, you know, they're animated. So he's dealing with robotics. He also harnessed uh, solar energy to power some of uh, these moving uh, uh, sculptures. So uh, it's safe to say that John Beadle was one of our most original uh, artists in the history of the Bahamas. In the 90s, Beadle also became a principal designer and sculptor in the One Family Shack, cementing his status in the Junkanoo community. Assistant professor at UB and leader of the College Junkanoo group, Christian Justilian says, Although they never worked together, Beetle was always kind and respectful. He says Beetle made great contributions in the area of visual arts and had a creative spirit. The work of John Beetle is eternal. It's here. He came in, he, did, he made his mark. Art and art history professor at the University of Miami, Dr. Erica James, studied at the College of the Bahamas with Beetle. She says he was always kind, one of the cool art kids, and now one of the leading Bahamian artists. I think of his generation, I think he was the leading artist, you know, locally based artist. Um, he could basically do anything. I, I, I have a little piece by him. Still to come on our news, our meteorologist Ian McKenzie joins us once again with a look at temperatures around the archipelago. Plus, coming up in sports, another Bahamian prepares to enter the minor leagues, and our Junior Davis Cup team is back on the court. Cancer treatment centers of... How do you know Sally? He was my rock and my anchor. Yeah, he was a good man. <laughs> he most certainly was not. Watch what you say about Sully. Who is this child? Your sisters, I'm asking you to do a few things for me. Once they are done, you will both receive your inheritance. The Paradise Hotel. When can I sell? Is this what the hotel is really worth? Don't take this the wrong way. It isn't really much of a hotel. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiencies. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having business in a box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer services that we pride ourselves on. Don't spend hours sending individual messages to your customers. Use SMS messaging instead. With Cable Bahamas Business Solutions SMS Messaging, you can send personalized messages to hundreds or even thousands of recipients instantly. It's quick, effortless, and cost-effective. Plus, it ensures that your messages are delivered directly to your customers' cellular phones, guaranteeing higher engagement. Save time and boost your outreach with SMS bulk messaging. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions at 601-8911 in Nassau or 602-8811 in the Family Islands.
You're watching our news. Welcome back. The Junior Davis Cup continues their path to qualification and a career night for John Quell Jones. Here now with our sports presented by 10th year seniors is Ronaldo Dorset and John Mark Nutt. Ronaldo. Thanks, Megan, and welcome to our sports presented by 10th year seniors. I'm Ronaldo Dorset. That's John Mark Nutt. Let's do show. Add another name to the growing list of Bahamian teenagers to enter the MLB minor league system. Rashawn Pinder is set to officially join the Texas Rangers organization when he signs as an international free agent tomorrow at the Andre Rogers Stadium at 6 p.m. It's all about how hard you work and how much discipline you have. If you don't have discipline, like you can't stay home, do your push-ups, eat right, always go into parties and stuff, it ain't gonna work. It was a hard decision. There was a couple of teams that gave me offers. After I went to the Rangers Complex, the final that they really care about you and the players are nice and everything. The International Elite Academy prospect recently won MVP at the Baseball Generations All-Star Game, which featured several of the top American and international prospects. Pinder will become the eighth Bahamian to sign with an MLB organization during the current international signing period. The Bahamas will compete against top teams in the region this week at the Junior Davis Cup qualifiers. The team of Jackson Mataggart, William McCartney, and Gerald Carroll will take on Canada, Mexico, and the United States in Orlando, Florida. It's a new chapter for this junior team because we've played many many um like junior davis cups and uh, this is just i'm just glad to be able to represent the bahamas at this level it, like excited you know to represent and like how how i'm gonna fight more for it because less people have like an opportunity to do this um and i know that i'm not just playing for me but i'm playing for like everyone that plays tennis in the Bahamas. Oh, it feels good because I mean, we've been playing team events since it was like 11, 12. I you know, and we won this year. So I feel like, yes, and it's, it feels good to go into this type of tournament. The trio advanced to the stage following a dominant performance at February's pre qualifier in the Dominican Republic. John Quell Jones' monster stat line led her team to a 2 1 series lead in the Women's Chinese Basketball Association finals. Jones finished with a career high 47 points and 10 rebounds to lead Inner Mongolia to a 96 85 win over top ranked Szechuan. Jones has been dominant all season long, but with Szechuan star Liz Cambage suspended for game three, the New York Liberty star took that dominance to another level. She shot 11 for 14 from the field, 19 for 25 from the free throw line, and 2 for 6 from 3 point range. Jones' previous career high in international play was a 44 point outing for Bosnia Herzegovina back in 2021 in the Eurobasket qualifiers. Her WNBA career high of 31 points also came in her 2021 MVP season. Inner Mongolia looks to close out the series in Game 4 on Friday. From one Jones to another, the Clippers signed big man Kai Jones to a multi year deal just before the playoff run. To be honest with you, this is the best opportunity of my basketball career career. I'm super happy to be here, super grateful for the opportunity and glad that the organization sees something in me and trust me to give me this chance to work my way back in and make the most out of this opportunity. That'll do it for our sports presented by 10th year seniors. For John Mark Nutt, I'm Ronaldo Dorsett. Back to the studio. Still ahead on our news tonight, fairly dry conditions throughout the capital today as nighttime temperatures expected to hover in the high 60s, low 70s. Ian is back with a look at your extended weather forecast when our news returns. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having business in a box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer services that we pride ourselves on. Don't spend hours sending individual messages to your customers. Use SMS messaging instead. With Cable Bahamas Business Solutions SMS Messaging, you can send personalized messages to hundreds or even thousands of recipients instantly. It's quick, effortless, and cost-effective. Plus, it ensures that your messages are delivered directly to your customers' cellular phones, guaranteeing higher engagement. 
Save time and boost your outreach with SMS bulk messaging. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions at 601-8911 in Nassau or 602-8811 in the Family Islands. medical care? Do you need affordable medical supplies? Ports International is the largest home health care supplier. Medical supplies at the very best price. And you can even shop online. From hospital beds to wound care, wheelchairs to walkers, Ports is a one-stop shop for your medical supplies and we accept insurance. We have online shopping and two locations to serve you at the Airport Industrial Park and Shirley Street. We also ship to the Family Islands. Shop online and visit us on Facebook. Call Ports at 377-1771. You've seen electric cars on the road, but isn't it time you drive one? Easy Car Sales invites you to experience the smooth, powerful ride and immerse yourself in the luxury and latest tech features. Find out why the Bahamas is going electric. Visit easy242.com and book your test drive now. Beautiful weather on this hump day Wednesday. Ian McKenzie is back now in the Weather Center with your extended weather forecast. Ian. Thanks, Megan. Good evening again, Bahamas. Welcome to our extended forecast where we still have this broad area of high pressure across our area. This is keeping most of the cold fronts at bay, so we will continue to persist with stable and dry weather pretty much into early next week. Boating forecast for the Northwest Bahamas still have a caution out there for you boaters due to those swells. Winds will be northeast, east 10 to 15 knots, seas 2 to 4, but up to 6 feet offshore. Low tide at 10.33 p.m. tonight, high tide at 4.51 a.m. tomorrow morning. The Central and Southeast Bahamas caution continuing as well. Winds northeast, east 15 knots, seas 3 to 5, but up to 7 feet offshore. Here's a look at your national forecast. And then your extended forecast, again, high pressure keeping things on the mild side. We have those highs getting up into the low 80s, which are low temperatures hovering around the low 70 degree mark. That's a wrap in the evening forecast. Make it a great, safe, fun night, everyone. Thanks, Ian, and thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Megan Shepard. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. But first, be sure to stay tuned for the season premiere of the dramedy series, This Is Paradise, which airs tonight at 8 p.m. Have a wonderful evening.